So here we have a minute of angle worksheet. This worksheet is nothing more than an exercise to help you understand what a minute of angle is and what it equals on the target. All right, six inches at 600 meters is how many minutes of angle? We go, you take your six inches, divided by the six of your yardage equals one minute of angle. All right, so one MOA at 600 meters is six inches. All right, three MOA, three minutes of angle at 200 meters equals how many inches? You take your three MOA, multiply it times the two of your 200 meter distance, and it gives you the number of inches that is on target. So three minutes of angle at 200 meters equals six inches on target downrange. All right, six inches at 400 meters equal how many minutes of angle? Six inches divided by your four of your 400 meters gives you one and a half minutes of angle on target. All right, four MOA at 300 meters, take four, multiply it times your three of your 300 meters, and it gives you 12 inches. All right, 20 inches at 500 meters is how many minutes of angle? 20 inches divided by the five of your distance gives you four minutes of angle. So if you need to move your shot 20 inches at 500 meters to account for wind or for elevation, you need to move your sights four minutes of angle. All right, your last one, five minutes of angle at 300 meters equals how many inches on target? Take your five minutes of angle, multiply it times your three of your distance, and it gives you 15 inches of movement on the target. So if you're at 300 meters and you move your sights five minutes of angle in one direction or the other, you're going to move the impact of that round 15 inches on target. Okay, the standard E-type silhouette is 40 inches tall and 20 inches wide. All right, this is to represent a human-sized target in a kneeling position. All right, using your known dimensions on this target, you'll be able to make inches and minute of angle conversions very, very easily. All right, so to make your MOA conversion, you do your inches divided by the distance and it gives you that minute of angle. Remember to only use the first number in the distance. So if you're at 100 meters, you do your inches times the one of your 100 meters and it gives you the minutes of angle on target. All right, to get your inches, you take your number of minutes of angle, you multiply that by the first number of your distance and it gives you the number of inches you need to move on target or how far you off the center of target. All right, again, round to the nearest whole number to make sight manipulation easier. So here we have the standard E-type silhouette at 300 meters. Again, it's 40 inches tall, it's 20 inches wide. We shot a five shot group on target, and as you can see, it's about 10 inches or so off the bottom side of that target. All right, so if we're 10 inches off the bottom of the target, we need to move to the center of the target. We know that the target's 40 inches tall, so the center would be 20 inches from the bottom we know we're another 10 inches lower than that, so we need to move a total of 30 inches uh, to get our group to the center of the target. So our elevation adjustment, again, we need to come up about 30 inches. 30 inches at 300 meters, you take 30 inches, divide it by the first number of your yardage, which is the three, and it gives you 10 minutes of angle. Now we know we need to move up 10 minutes of angle on our sight system. All right, we make that uh, adjustment here on the front sight. Remember, one click on the front sight post of an M4 rifle is worth one and three quarters minutes. Okay? So to move our, our 10 minutes of angle up to the center of the target, we need to move about six clicks on the front sight post. Again, the math doesn't work out perfectly, but it's going to be very, very close. All right. Again, our, our group is centered left and right, so we don't need to make any windage adjustments at all. All right, here we have another exercise. We have a 500 meter target. Our group is on the right edge of the target at 500 meters. We know that that target's 20 inches wide. So therefore, to move our group from the right edge into center, we need to move 10 inches left. All right, so the elevation adjustment is good to go. We, we turn our bullet drop compensator to 500 and the elevation is good. All right, so now we need to make that wind adjustment to get our group centered up. We need to come 10 inches left. All right, 10 inches at 500 meters is two minutes of angle. We took our 10, divided it by the first number of our distance, and it gave us two minutes of angle. We know we need to move those sights two minutes of angle to the left in order to get our group 
in the center of the target. One click of windage on an M4 rifle is worth three quarters of a minute. All right, so we know that each click is worth three quarters of a minute on our windage knob. We need to move a full two minutes. So we go about three clicks and that's gonna get our group fairly close to centered up. Again, the math doesn't work out exactly, but it's very, very close. All right, another target here, we need to come again down and left on this target. So we have to adjust both the elevation and the windage. Okay, we know target's 40 inches tall, it's 20 inches wide. Looks like we need to move our, um, our group about, say roughly, mm, probably 30 inches down, 24 inches down. All right, 24 inches at 400 meters gives us six minutes of angle. Again, each click on the front sight post is worth one and three quarter minutes of angle. So to move our, our group to about six minutes of angle, we need to come down roughly three clicks on that front sight post. That corrects our elevation adjustment. All right, so for our windage adjustment, it looks like we need to move roughly 20 inches left. We know the target's 20 inches wide, so from center to the edge is 10 inches, and it looks like we're about 10 inches off the right edge here. So we need to move, move a full 20, in, uh, 20 inches left. 20 inches at 400 meters is five minutes of angle. Each click on the windage site is worth three quarters of a minute. So we need to move roughly seven clicks on that rear site to get the group into the center of the target. Boom. After you make both of these corrections, your next group should be fairly well centered on target. All right, I think this is the last one, 600 meters. All right, our group is a little bit low and a little bit left. So elevation adjustment, we need to come up. We're at the bottom edge of the target. We need to come up roughly uh, 20 inches. Say so call it 18 for the ease of math. All right, 18 divided by the six gives us three minutes of angle. Again, one click is worth one and three quarter minutes. We come up two clicks, it's gonna move us roughly that 18 to 20 inches up to the center of the target. Okay. All right, our windage adjustment, we need to move a full 30 inches right. Um, so from the center of the target to the edge of the target, again, is 10 inches. We're about 20 inches off the edge of the target. We do our math, we do 30 inches divided by six of, the, of our number of our distance, and it gives us five minutes of angle. All right, again, each click on that rear sight of an M4 rifle is worth three quarters of a minute. So we round, we uh, click our rear sight about seven clicks right, and that should move our group roughly to the center of the target. So using the dimensions of that target are gonna help you translate how many inches you need to move on target to how many minutes of angle you need to move on site You'll be able to make your sight adjustments boldly and make it centered up for your next group without having to just walk it and keep shooting um, multiple groups to get to center mass. Okay, now we're going to talk about the different sighting systems on the M16 and M4 weapon system. Okay, the front sight post on an M16 A2 rifle, each click of the front sight post moves you one and a quarter minutes of up or down. So it changes your elevation each click one and a quarter minutes. All right, on the M4 rifle, each click is worth one and three quarter minutes. That's due to the distance in the sight radius from the front sight post to the rear sight aperture. All right, as you shorten the distance of the sight radius, each click on the windage and elevation and on the front sight post is worth more. All right, when zeroing, uh, adjust the elevation with the front sight post and make your windage adjustments on the rear sight. So for your 25 meter zero or your 300 meter zero, depending on which range you're at, um, you're gonna make all of your elevation adjustments on the front sight post itself, not on the rear sight. Again, your rear sight has to be set at eight slash three or six slash three uh, to get a good zero. The arrow that is stamped in the upper or in the front sight housing indicates which way that you move the arrow or move the front sight post and it's gonna move the bullet that direction. All right, so if you need to go up, you turn the front sight post in the direction of the arrow which is pointing to up and that's gonna move the group up. All right, the backup iron sight. All right, to zero, the three, get a 300 meter zero at 25 meters with the backup iron sight, you use it on the M16A4, you use the white line. All right, on the M4, you use it at the actual 300 meter setting, okay? And this gives you a point of aim, point of impact zero at 25 meters. Remember, once you zero an M16A4 using the white line at 25 meters, when you move out to actual distance to a 300 meter rifle range, 
you put it back on 300. That white line is only used for zeroing at 25 meters on an M16A4. Okay, each windage click on an M16A4 on the backup iron sight is worth a half minute of angle. The exact same sight, when it's on an M4, each click is worth three quarters of a minute of angle. Here we have the M68. It's a non-magnified optic, all right? To get a 300 meter zero at 25 meters, you're gonna zero it approximately one centimeter low at 25 meters, all right? Always confirm your optic zero at actual distance. Again, just like uh, zeroing with the iron sight, it's hard to get a true 300 meter zero at any distance other than 300 meters. So confirm that zero at actual distance. Each click on the windage and elevation on an M68 is worth a half minute of angle. Okay, so here we have some uh, PCIs. Always ensure that your sighting systems are tight on the weapon. Okay, if you're shooting an EOTech or an LCAN, make sure that the base of that sighting system is attached, attached uh, firmly to the sighting system itself. Uh, they're, they're held on with screws, and those screws can back out, which allow the, the sight itself and the base of the sight to wiggle around. Uh, you don't want that. It's going to make it impossible to zero that weapon system. So make sure that the weapons are that the base of the sighting system is very secure to the sight itself. Again, if you're shooting with a regular scope, like a Leopold Mark IV, make sure that the, your rings are tight on the scope and that the rings are also tight on the upper receiver of the weapon system. If you're shooting an ACOG, make sure that the two cross screws that hold the ACOG to the upper receiver are very, very snug. Um, you take a, a flat blade of screwdriver, get them hand tight, and then turn them about another half a turn to snug them down on the, uh, on the upper receiver. On the M68, they have a built-in torque nut on those, so you tighten that nut until it clicks over, and that puts the correct amount of torque on that screw to hold it to the upper receiver. Okay, now we're gonna go into grouping. All right, if at all possible, we always try to shoot five shot groups when we're zeroing the rifle. All right, here you can see a three shot group versus a five shot group. Remember that you always make your sight corrections from the center of the group. So if you have a three shot group where the shooter shot two good shots and then one shot that's way outside, he may have called that shot out, you still have to move from the center of that group. So as you can see here, the center of the group on a three shot group is pretty far out to the right, which you shoot the same five, you shoot two more shots and you have four really good ones and one wild shot. You discount that, that extremely wild shot. The shooter, again, may have called it. You triangulate your four shots and that shows you a more true representation of how far you need to move the center of the group to center mass. If you shoot those, if you moved it off of the three shot group, you would have overcorrected and this next group would probably be too far on the left. All right, this is why shooting five shot groups is normally easier to zero than having a shooter shoot three shot groups. Okay, a failure to shoot a group within the weapon system's capabilities causes a failure to zero. All right, as your shooting skills improves, your group should shrink down on target. All right, it's not uncommon for zeros to shift when this happens. When you take a shooter that's not comfortable with the rifle, that's not comfortable with shooting, again, they're going to shoot normally bigger groups uh, than what they will once they become more familiar and more comfortable with that rifle. As their groups start to shrink down, you can see that that group shrunk down, but the, group, the zero shifted on the rifle. Once they start shooting very, very tight groups right on top of one another, it's very easy just to make the correction and get them to center mass. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about target analysis. All right, the important part of analyzing a target downrange is to remember that all shooting takes place at the rifle, okay? Nothing that happened on a 25 meter range from, from the muzzle to the target is gonna affect where that bullet is on the target itself. It would take about 50 mile an hour wind to move the bullet left or right, even a centimeter at 25 meters, okay? The important thing to remember is whatever happened to cause that shooter to shoot higher or lower or big groups happened at the rifle. So you can't really tell what the shooter was doing wrong by looking at a target. You need to watch the shooter to ensure they're doing everything externally correctly um, and then have them call their shots so you can know that they're focusing on the front sight post.